the digital systems the UN wants to implement. The fact that the UN is apparently developing a separate digital ID system for the elites really says it all. So, how do you force the average person to adopt a digital ID when they don't want to? Well, there's only one answer, and that's to create a situation where the average person needs a digital ID to do everyday things. A situation where not having a digital ID makes living unbearably difficult. During the pandemic, dozens of countries demanded that their citizens show digital proof of a medical procedure that I shall not name because of the YouTube algorithm. The UNDP report arguably proves that these digital certificates of compliance were de facto digital IDs, in case that wasn't obvious enough. To be clear, I'm not saying the pandemic was at all premeditated. All I will say is that a pandemic simulation called Event 201 was conducted in October 2019 in partnership with the WEF, which partnered with the UN to push SDGs earlier that year, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which has spent billions on digital ID development. There's also BlackRock's report from August 2019 that predicted the fiscal and monetary response to the pandemic and even what comes next for the economy after it's over. That will be in the description. Now, with that said, there's no question that the UN and its affiliates took advantage of the pandemic to run large-scale tests of their digital ID systems. I mean, the UNDP says this over and over in that digital strategy report. The UNDP report also reveals that digital ID will be used to support and enforce the UN's other initiatives, such as the Paris Agreement. If you watched our aforementioned video about individual carbon credit systems, you'll know that Article 6 of the Paris Agreement establishes these systems. The UNDP report even reveals details about how exactly the UN's digital ID push is being coordinated from the top. It discusses a, quote, digital governance group, which is providing all the funding. What's concerning is that I could not find any information about this organization anywhere on the internet. What's especially concerning is that the UNDP report describes the establishment of a global headquarters, country offices, regional offices, and policy centers for the digital ID rollout. It even reveals the roles that the public and private institutions will play in this digital ID dystopia. The paragraph that really stuck out to me was, quote, country offices will be the primary drivers of digital program design and implementation in the field. They will be supported by networked digital advocates with specialized training, as well as ICT associates who will support the rollout of new corporate systems and processes. I couldn't help but be reminded of how WEF chairman Klaus Schwab is ushering in the Great Reset using a massive network of so-called young global leaders and so-called young global shapers. Use your own conch or you own the borders anyway. Only on this side. This is an overseas delivery. A girl. She needs to be in America in six days. Why are you playing with me? You know I can't get back into that country. You know that UN passports are impossible to fake. This is not a fake. Injected in your neck when you pass the official border. This is your new life. Clean credit. John Doe. What's the catch? You have to make a choice. That's the catch. I'll do it for half a mil. <laughs> Nephilim will return. As in the days of Noah, Matthew 24, 37, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. 
As it was back then in Noah's day, so things will be again, as scripture says, Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been will be again, what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. So Jesus said in Matthew 24.37, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And what was it like in the days of Noah? Well, giants, Nephilim, were on the earth in those days. And not only giants, but the fallen ones, fallen angels who mated with earthly women. Uh, let me read that, Genesis 6, 1-8. to When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children with them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. So when Jesus comes to the earth at his coming, it states clearly in Scripture, it will be as it was in the days of Noah. In Daniel, it also speaks of the final kingdom, the kingdom of iron and clay. Daniel 2, 43. And just as you saw the iron mixed with clay, so the people will mix with one another, but they shall not hold together, as iron does not mix with clay. Clay, humans. Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, the work of your hands. Job 10.8 Your hands fashioned me and made me, and now you have destroyed me altogether. Remember that you have made me like clay. Isaiah 29.16 You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say to the maker, he did not make me, or the thing formed, say, of him who formed it. He has no understanding. So who is the iron? I believe it to be as in the days of Noah, the fallen ones, as this scripture backs this up also, Daniel 2.43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Who are the they? I believe it to be the fallen ones who mingled themselves with the seed of men in Noah's day. The fallen ones did with women. Uh, Genesis, as I read before, Genesis 6, 1 to 8. So the fallen ones will rule, I believe, with man, iron with clay in the final kingdom and mingle with the seed of men. At that time, God will set up and crush that kingdom of iron and clay. Daniel 2.44 In the time of those kings, the Lord of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it itself will endure forever. So just as in the days of Noah, iron and clay were being mixed, two different species, humans and fallen ones, and this is how it will be like before the coming of Jesus Christ to put an end to this final kingdom of iron and clay. At this time, the Nephilim, giants, will be on the earth once again to terrorize the inhabitants of the earth. All those that put full trust in God, the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ will be protected as Noah was. And Dr. Dacondier, or 